Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and today we're going to be taking a look at a completed Blackstone Fortress game set. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our daily reactions, reviews, and news, painting, modeling, conversion, and magnetization tutorials for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, Horus Heresy, and of course, the Quest games as well. So if you're not familiar with Blackstone Fortress, it is an independent Warhammer Quest game. It takes place in the Warhammer 40,000 uh, sort of like time frame and as like the far future. Very, very cool models exclusive to this set. Uh, there are 44 total models uh, and they are a bunch of individual sculpts. A couple of them are repeated on some of the bad guys, but there are nine unique adventures. There's one big bad and then a series of other bad guys that you make your way through questing in the game as well. And this is a really cool game also uh, because while it is sort of like a dungeon diver type game, uh, you are not fighting against a dungeon master or against other players. You're working together on a team and then the monsters are controlled by dice rolls and charts that tell them how to behave. So it's very, very cool. It has very good AI for the non-player characters, the bad guys. And uh, makes the game extremely, extremely fun. It's very cool. You level up the same way you would in a video game. Get stronger abilities, better attacks and equipment, etc. Uh, very, very cool game. Uh, but enough about the actual game. Let's take a look at these minis and talk a little bit about the paint jobs. Before we do, all of these models are using Citadel paints. We did use some contrast paints, some traditional paints, and true metallic metals as well. And then also the bases are custom made to fit the game board like the actual board itself with like the pink and blue sort of uh like lines and triangles and shapes are all done to match the board game from the set and then also there is some citadel texture paints as well to kind of blend it all together because these models are all push fit and they do have push fit bases so rather than cutting them all off the push fit pegs and weakening the way that they mount I like to use the push fit sets and then incorporate that into the custom bases and then just make sure that it's a seamless transition. So let's take a closer look at this set. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with our leader, Janice Drake, the rogue trader. A very, very nice model right here. Super unique and excellent representation of a traditional rogue trader, if there is such a thing. Uh, so he has his armored chest plate and groin pad. Obviously, his very, very powerful rapier. Uh, super cool in game terms as well. And then he has his monocle slash bionic eye, as well as his little smoking device. And then, of course, he has a little beast draped over him. Uh, super fancy. Very, very cool model and super cool in game terms also. And next, we have Tedius the Purifier, Munistorum Priest. Again, very, very cool model. He has sort of like a servo skull kind of bionic going on there uh, with his own little gun. And then he obviously has his prayer book out and uh, very, very cool details. Lots of awesome stuff to pick out here. And then, uh, uh, you know, the power weapon as well for like the glow effect. We use the contrast paints for the white of his uh, cloth robes and a series of other paints as well. Very, very cool. Very happy with how he came out. And of course, the custom basing as well. And next we have Espern Locarno, the Imperial Navigator. Uh, so again, really cool robes and nice cloth effects. I've used some of the Citadel technical paints for the uh, little glow and everything. And everything from the armor and a series of washes to the little bits of detail on the robes and everything um, is majority done with contrast paints and then our Citadel uh, Retributor armor for the gold. If you are interested in any of the specific paints or anything, they're all listed down below. If you're not sure about where one was used or a specific area, feel free to ask about that as well. And next we have Pius Vorn, our missionary zealot. She has this super cool weapon, the Eviscerator Chainsword. And then of course it has like a built-in flamer as well. Very, very powerful in game terms. Uh, she is awesome. A little bit of a glass cannon. Uh, but really, really cool model, and then also amazing in-game terms. Very, very nice, super cool, and uh, very thematic here. This set goes together very well. And then here we have UR-025, the Imperial Robot. Again, really cool model. This guy has like a Gatling cannon. Uh, plays a little differently in-game terms to the other models, 
but very, very cool overall. Very powerful, but also needs to be uh, protected. Um, very cool model. And some of the OG AI intelligence no longer around in the Imperium. So he is a relic in his own right. And next we have Dayek Grek, our Kroot Tracker. Again, just tons and tons of detail. Very nice looking Kroot model right now. And definitely where some of the inspiration for the recent kill team uh, has come from as well. Really, really cool. Loaded with details. And again, awesome in game terms. Dayek Grek, the Kroot Tracker. And then next we have Amelin Shadow Guide. She is very, very cool. An Eldari Sniper. So basically like a space elf. And she is a total awesome warrior uh, at range and then up close as well. Again, just loaded with really, really cool details. Super cool armor, nice flowing robes. And then she's got that awesome sniper rifle as well as her very, very powerful power dagger also. And then you can see how it all blends together and gives that cool basing effect. Very nice model, super cool and awesome in game terms. And finally, we have our Rattling Twins, Rain and Ross. These guys are super cool. They behave much different to any other characters in the game. When you pick your character and you'll have four adventurers on your adventuring party, uh, you actually pick these guys as a single adventurer, and then you get to use the two of them in game terms. You have to split sort of like your action points between them each turn, uh, but you can like allow one to do all the everything, or you can split it evenly. Uh, very cool very fun and uh, these guys are super powerful as well as being just awesome models and uh, obviously the paint jobs are super cool and uh, hopefully did the sculpts justice all right and here we have obsidious malix the chaos lord he is the big bad for the entire game and uh, is totally loaded up a very powerful adversary he has his super cool power hammer or thunder hammer and then also his chaos plasma pistol as well and you can see the detail that's sculpted into him. Everything from the flowing cape to the fur draped over him um, obviously has been taken in by the dark gods and uh, does a very, very nice representation of a Chaos Lord, in my opinion. And he is more than a worthy adversary in game terms. Very, very cool. And what would a Chaos Lord be without a couple of Chaos Space Marines? to get his back. So here we have a couple of Chaos Space Marines that accompany Obsidious Malice. They alone are worthy adversaries for any of our adventurers, uh, but all combined together, very, very powerful adversaries. And again, very cool models. All right, and next we have our Rogue Psychers. These two hovering bad guys have some crazy, crazy psychic powers. They were once loyalists to the Imperium, but slowly gave in to the Dark Gods through possession and uh, possess some very, very strong powers of their own. They're really, really cool models, and uh, definitely some nice adversaries in game terms. And next we have a few of the Chaos Beastmen. You get four total in the set, and you can assemble them each in a way that they're all individual, uh, different from each other. They will, of course, have some shared stuff, but I really like how the Push Fit set is made up here, um, as you basically have like two generic bodies and then two sets of generic bits, and you can arrange them in a couple different ways to give you four different sculpts. Uh, very, very cool models and turned out really nice. And here we have a couple of our Urghuls. These are actually like Drukhari or Dark Eldar lore, but we do find them in the Blackstone Fortress. And uh, these are very, very difficult uh, in game terms. I'm sure there are other people out there that had less difficulty, uh, but they almost wiped our party on multiple occasions. So be careful for these bad boys. And again, these models are absolutely amazing. Hopefully you enjoy the paint jobs. And next we have a couple of our spindle drones. These things are very cool. They are unique to the Blackstone Fortress and sort of like it's alien technology protectors. Uh, again, in game terms, they are really, really cool. They actually have the ability to like strengthen in game as you're playing against them i don't want to do like any spoilers or anything but very cool and they can be extremely extremely dangerous on uh, super cool models but you can see here very clearly why i didn't want to take them off of their original mounting points i wanted to reuse the push fit system and then just kind of blend it into the custom bases uh, and i think it turned out real well and then of course a couple extra skulls uh, always nice all right and then here we have some of the negavolt cultists 
Um, and again, these are custom to the game, Blackstone Fortress. I believe they were like originated from that. Uh, but really, really cool. Definitely some potent adversaries in combat. Really, really cool models. They have like their big power generators on the back. And then the super cool like power sticks that they smack you with. Uh, really, really cool. And again, all these adversaries are super tough in game terms. And the AI for them is really good as well. Uh, it makes it so that they can do predictable things, uh, but they behave as they should. All right. And then here we have our trader guard. So these are the uh, Imperial Guard that have basically given in to the Chaos Gods. Uh, very, very cool. You get 14 total in the set, um, and they are in sets of seven. So there are duplicates, two of each model. Uh, so you have two full sets of seven, uh, including like the Sergeant with the Chain Fist and Pistol. And then we have a bunch with close combat weapons and pistols, and a bunch with longer range guns, and then even a couple with Flamers. Uh, very, very cool models, and the inspiration for the Blooded Kill Team uh, that is now out there for the Trader Guard. And here we have a couple more of the Trader Guardsmen. A nice blend of different weapons. They have male and female, varying heights, builds, equipment. Uh, very cool. Now you do get two of each, but the actual seven different sculpts are very, very uh, individual and very cool. Very unique. And here we have one more with the longer range weapon, little knife. We've got the flamethrower. Uh, it's got like the cool gas mask and everything. They've got various armor, chains, spikes. Really cool. And they look great with some contrast paints on them. And here we have the sort of uh, grenadier or the uh, last of the trader guardsmen. Uh, or of the seven I'm showing you at least. Uh, very cool overall. Really nice set. Tons of unique sculpts and just a great, great game to play. I uh, highly recommend Blackstone Fortress for people that like quest type games. So that is it. That's the entire set. 44 push fit miniatures. Um, and uh, although there are seven duplicates for the Trader Guard and a couple of other like exact duplicates or close duplicates with some of the other models, all the sculpts for this set are unique from any other sculpts available anywhere else. So really, really cool. Uh, currently, the game sells for $170 USD. Uh, so if you look at it just for the minis, you're paying about $3.50 each, which is an excellent deal, obviously, with the game and everything included and countless hours of play. I do really, really get behind the Blackstone Fortress game. It's probably my favorite or close to my favorite of all of the Warhammer Quest games. So definitely really recommend it. If you've never played it, if you've never checked it out, the models are amazing. The game is awesome. It's super fun. It's very challenging. And you don't feel like you get to the point where you're just going through the motions. There's always excitement there's always something around the next corner uh, very very cool game so definitely excited to share these with you guys excited to get them to the client uh, who has purchased this commission and i uh, highly recommend it if you have not checked this out already that you do and if you're interested in how we achieved the effects on any of these models uh, check out the other videos as well as there is a complete painting tutorial uh, for how these were painted including how we made the bases as well and then uh, the whole process in various stages uh, so you can feel free to check those videos out from the playlist as well so uh, so that is it for today uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video if you have any questions or anything let me know down below if you don't mind engaging with the video by liking subscribing sharing commenting all that good stuff uh, really helps out the channel uh, but that is it for today i am of course warhammer man and this is warhammer man studios and that's one more completed commission the blackstone fortress set very very cool and can't wait to get this safely to the client so that they can enjoy it but that's it for today. Check out the other videos that go along with this series. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.